W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Um, past couple videos that that have been done were concerning phasing um, and how important that is. Getting an equal amplitude and 180 degree phase shift and canceling them. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about phase cancellation or probably a better um, better way to say it would be phase relationship um, and I'm going to go over to the uh, computer desk over there and we're going to look at um, the multiplex output uh, of, of an older FM receiver. Now I know that there are already provisions in the digital world to do this where you can see the multiplex and see the RDS signal and the stereo pilot and all that, but we'll talk a little bit about those things. And we'll punch through four or five different uh, local frequencies here and see who's, who has what. You know, who has an SCA on, who has uh, a, um, uh, the RDS going, who's broadcasting in stereo, who has the pilot, and why the, and who has the, the double sideband 38 kilohertz, and why the phasing is so important. Um, from that 19 kilohertz pilot doubled to 38 kilohertz and then you have your double sideband and there's a phase relationship between those two. Sort of like what we were doing with um, the MFJ box and SDR Uno but uh, on an older scale. And again I know that, oh, this thing? What's that look like? That's for the next video coming up. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, so I know that there's already provisions in, um, might be, it might be uh, um, SDR Sharp. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked at them. I, I, I saw it somewhere. But this is the old way that we used to do it. Um, receivers, FM receivers, FM tuners uh, from the 70s and up to maybe 90 or so had multiplex output. And even before that, in the 60s, some of the two tuner, tube tuners had multiplex output, which was the full 100 kilohertz of bandwidth that was available at the detector or the discriminator inside of the FM receiver. Um, most of that is rolled off. We never get to see it uh, unless we look elsewhere. Um, some of these services were things like reading for the blind, that was a pretty big deal on the SCA and some telemetry. Um, I think the two frequencies were 67 kilohertz and 92 kilohertz. It's been an awful long time. But I was puttering around with my tuner today and I said, geez, I wonder if anybody would be interested in, in seeing uh, an old geezer show them how uh, things used to be, how we would look at these things. Um, before before somebody went and wrote, wrote software that would that would do it for us. So with that in mind, I'll take you into the other room and see how uh, see what ra radio I'm using. You know the connection. Oh, I'm always I'm always doing that. Um, the other purpose for the uh, discriminator output and another output in the back of some of these old tuners was for uh, multipath elimination. Um, you would be able to uh, detect it on an oscilloscope uh, and use that. In fact, some, some uh, radios, I think even like Marantz, uh, actually came with a built-in oscilloscope. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the horizontal output from, from that kind of a system, which is at the discriminator, and we're going to take a look at that and poke around. All right, so um, I guess that's it. Um, what else? Well, oh, two other things real quick. I'm using a, a microphone here. Hopefully this is picking up my voice better than all the echoes and stuff from inside the uh, shack here. It's a remote microphone and uh, maybe somebody can comment on that. And the other thing is, uh, let's see, who was that? One RF Sam made a comment um, that I should put a super thanks button uh, down on the bottom of my videos. So if you want to take advantage of that um, Finally figured out how to do it. Not you know this new fancy new tech is uh, beyond me I'm just an old-fashioned guy here. So anyway, let's go over to the other room We'll take a look at what we're going to be doing and we'll go from there. Thanks a lot W1 VLF out from the lab Here's 
Here's that quick screenshot that I mentioned before. You can see from right to left, you have the mono audio, left plus right, then the stereo pilot at 19 kilohertz. Moving to the right, we have 38 kilohertz uh, double sideband, which is the left minus right uh, signal. And then the uh, 56 kilohertz um, radio data system, RDS, um, on there on the end there. Uh, unfortunately, in this picture, there is no 67 or 92 kilohertz uh, photos, excuse me, uh, carriers uh, available. So I'll leave this up for a couple of seconds. All right, so we're standing here in front of the FM portion, uh, music listening portion of the W1VLF radio station. And here is the um, receiver that we're going to be using. It's the uh, Ankyo, uh, what is it, the 9090? Can't even remember. I haven't turned this on in quite a long time. Oh, it's the uh, T, T1990E. And this tuner has got all sorts of really neat stuff. It's got three or four different bandwidths, uh, two different antenna inputs, um, you know, blending of the audio, memories, and all that. And what I've done here now is um, on, there's channel one, channel two, or excuse me, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five. And these are some of the stations that we'll be going after and looking at the uh, spectrum over here uh, using HF plus an air spy. Let me turn this light on back here. So here's the, <laughs> here's, <laughs> this has got to look really good. Oh, these are test cables here, but um, here's, here's the receiver. Um, and you can see in the back there, I think you can see in the back there that there is uh, something called multipath. Can you see it? Let's see. Anyway, it's called multipath, and you take both of those, connect them to the uh, vertical and horizontal inputs of a, of a uh, oscilloscope, and um, that would, um, you know, you would get a diagonal line uh, using the XY inputs, and then you would be able to uh, tune the, your antenna system for maximum, uh, maximum clarity or minimum multipath. So that's the receiver, and pardon all the wires and everything. I'll get around to fixing that someday. Um, and then we're going to be using uh, the Air Spy directly from that cable coming from the back of that receiver, and we'll be using um, SDR Sharp. So let me uh, get on that, um, fire up this part of the video, and uh, I'll be right back. W1VLF. Okay, folks, we're back over here now at the ham station running uh, a copy of uh, SDR Sharp and the AirSpy HF Plus receiver here. And it is actually an older uh, HF um, Plus. So let me turn off the radio because I want to show you something here real quick. Okay, that's, there's some noise on, on that line coming over from the um, multiplex out on the receiver. But uh, that essentially, there's nothing there, right? Just a, some, a little bit of garbage. So let me turn the radio on. This is the uh, FM receiver. And you can see the, the bandwidth, the spectral bandwidth starting down here at, um, I don't know, what would that be? Below 100 cycle, I mean, below a, a kilohertz or so, a few hundred cycles. And, uh, and then the, the uh, bandwidth starts to roll off here at about 110 uh, kilohertz or so. So let me just put the peak hold uh, option on here for a couple seconds and then I will shut the radio off and uh, hmm, shut the wrong radio off. There we go. So you can you can see what the bandwidth looks like. Okay. Um, and I'm going to insert in here somewhere maybe before I do this or or somewhere along during the middle of this uh, little uh, recording session, um, kind of a diagram of what everything is that we're looking at. All right, let's uh, let's fire back up again, and we'll get rid of that. So this is just the IF bandwidth. It's all noise, right? So this kind of shows you what what the uh, demodulated output looks like. Really flat down to uh, 
probably this many cycles, whatever that is, and, uh, and up, up to here. So I'm going to turn on the first station here. I'm going to go push the memory button. And this is a 90.5. Okay. And 90.5, you can see uh, I'm centered at 38 kilohertz right now. And the top end is 105. The bottom end is zero. This is your left plus right channel. This is essentially the 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 announcers of voice. Um, and there's very little component over here in the double sideband signal. In fact, let me uh, let me just try to bring that down a little bit. Maybe make it a little easier to see. Okay, um, th but this is audio. You can tell it's audio just through the inflections, the, the, you know, the, the inflections of, of someone speaking. And there's some, some, I don't think this is not the double sideband signal, although I do see uh, um, a pilot here. Um, the pilot carrier is at 19 kilohertz. Okay, and let's take a listen to, to that 19 kilohertz. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring the uh, bandwidth in a little bit. Boy, talk about flubbing it up, messing it up. 19 kilohertz, and we'll bring the band within. That carrier, that stereo pilot, has zero information on it. It is just there to provide a reference for 38 kilohertz. We'll go up to 38 kilohertz here real quick. And you can see there's no information there. You can also see here at, this is going to be 56 kilohertz, 50. 50, 56, 57. This is going to be the uh, RDS, and you can almost hear it's it's sort of sort of data like. So let's let's go back up the band here a little bit more, where we have somebody that's in stereo. Okay. So let's go back down to uh, 19 kilohertz. Okay. Again. No modulation there. Here's the audio, the left, pl left plus right audio, and here is the double sideband signal. Okay, let me, uh, let me bring up the detectors here. Nope, that's not what I want, I want this. And we will, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Okay, and there's the that's the 38 kilohertz signal, but let's there's not an awful lot of it there. There's not much signal there, so let's go up one more and take another listen. Okay, I got to be careful here because if this gets detected as as music, I'll be in uh, I'll be in big trouble here. So let's go. Let's see what do we have here. We got about 30 kilohertz of uh, 30 kilohertz or plus or minus 30 kilohertz of bandwidth and let's go and listen in the double sideband mode and see if we can recognize any audio we're already in the double sideband mode let's listen okay when there is no music and it's just voice you'll notice that there is no care there is no double sideband information let me mute that again. Let's go up one more and see if we can find something a little more suitable. Okay, let's take a look at this. What do we have here? Well, that's our zero line, so that's why there appears to be a carrier there. We see audio up to about, I don't know, four or five kilohertz here. And what? There's no stereo pilot. Okay, now, so now they're playing some music, so you have information further up the band. But there's you see no stereo pilot. You see no 38 kilohertz. And maybe a little something over here. This is not a really strong station. And here we get to something that really starts to look like something. Let's take a listen at on this 38 kilohertz double sideband signal right here. Take a listen. See if we hear recognize anything. Okay, I don't want that to run for too, for too long, but I think somebody somebody out there might have recognized what that was. So so how does this all work? This is left plus right. In other words, the two channels are added together here. So you come up with a mono, which is the left channel and the right channel. This is left minus right. 
So whatever was in the left channel, you minus the in whatever the difference between the left and right channels, you subtract those and you modulate them onto a carrier at 38 kilohertz. Okay, but it's a double sideband carrier and it sounds like crap. Okay, and in fact, if I probably move this one cycle, okay, you could you could I've moved it four cycles now. And you can hear that pulsing going on. I'm going to get pinched for that. I just know it. I'll have to mute that out maybe later. So, so what is this 20, what is this 19 kilohertz carrier doing right here? Well, first off, we roll the audio off at 15 kilohertz so that you have an empty hole here in the spectrum and they put in this carrier, this 19 kilohertz carrier. Now, 19 times two is 38. And when you take this with the correct phase relationship and place it, it use this, this is a double side, it's not a single sideband receiver, but a double sideband receiver, right? We're all familiar with uh, single sideband, but this is double sideband and it needs the exact phased carrier to bring it back. We usually use, in the amateur radio world, we, we have an oscillator that runs and we tune it back and forth till it sounds really good. But if you can have a reference signal like this and make it phase stable, you do that by multiplying this carrier times two, ends up being the exact carrier that you need to decode this. Let's go up here again. Here, here's the uh, 56 kilohertz stuff, right? The RDS, maybe this one will sound a little better. It'll pop this open. You can tell that there's probably an easier way to probably there's an easier way to do this, but yeah, let's go back to uh Okay, there it is, it's data, right? Pretty much can tell that. And then you and then you go up the band here. You look and you look and you go, what's this thing? What's this big carrier hanging out up here? Well, this is 67 kilohertz, and I'm going to lock onto it and see what comes up in the display. 67 kilohertz, and lots of stations used to use this 67 kilohertz and 92 kilohertz, and modulate it. Let's see. It it looks like this one is just sitting there not doing anything. But let's narrow the band width way up. Let's go into uh, narrow FM and take a listen. Whoops, we moved. How can we keep moving? Yeah, it's just sitting there unmodulated. Um, but they, they uh, FM broadcasters had the ability to do uh, two stations like this, two signals, one at 67 and one at 92. Uh, this could be reading for the blind. This could be uh, stock market. You guys don't want to hear that radio running over there stock market reports, all sorts of different things. Um, but due to the internet, a lot of that traffic is, uh, is no longer available. Um, there, if you go on the internet and look, there's 67 and 92 kilohertz. Uh, I don't know what that is. I wonder if that's some, some, uh, some function of, uh, 19 kilohertz times, times two, times three, times four. I don't know if that's a harmonic or exactly what that is, but you, you you can see that this 67 kilohertz carrier does exist, but they're just not using it. Let's go listen to the 19 kilohertz here again. Okay, the 19 kilo the 19 kilohertz carrier doesn't have any modulation; just sits there. And it's making a reference for the 38 kilohertz. Double sideband signal here. But of course it's not phase correct. So it's gonna, it's not gonna sound a uh, hundred percent you know, perfect. 
some edges. So let's start, let's just go back, uh, let's move up the band here one more, uh, one more channel. Okay. Here's a station that's got a 19, uh, it's got the audio all the way up, up to, uh, up to, to uh, 19 kilohertz here, but there's very little other audio. This is a mono station. In fact, this is a, it's, it's not that it's mono, there's a pilot there and the receiver indeed says it's in stereo, but there's no left minus right 38 kilohertz channel here. So therefore, or very, very little. So I don't even know if they're trying to be a stereo or what. Yeah, very, very little information there. Okay, here, here's another one now. Um, again, the mono left plus right audio. And look at look at the amplitude of this. Now I'm going to pop this open for a second in double sideband and see if we can hear it. You can hear it pulsing. Out. Okay, I'm trying to decode that with a with the uh, oscillator in this radio that is not exactly 38 kilohertz phase related to the 19 kilohertz pilot so anyway so that's how we used to do it in the old days so here's the station and here, here's the first station we talked about um, there seems to be a little bit of information here i don't know if that's an actual double sideband signal or not doesn't sound like it i'll just pop through these real quick well, there's the one we were we were just looking at Another one. And you can see this. It, all all these have that 56 kilohertz um, RDS signal, or most of them do. And here's one with even with like we said before with the um, 67 kilohertz. Unfortunately, it's unmodulated. So that's the way we used to do it in the old days. If I wanted to listen to uh, an SCA carrier. What I would do is I would take the output from the multiplex out in the receiver or the, the horizontal output from a uh, XY axis to a oscilloscope. And um, you then you would tune that with another receiver that was able to receive at 67 kilohertz. Of course, this is old, uh, old hat now, right? Uh, because there are utilities for this program to actually do that. Let me narrow this way up and just take a listen, see if there's... Yeah, I don't hear any audio on it. I wish there I wish there was. I'm gonna, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do a quick scan up in frequency from here and we'll see if there's anybody out there that's got, that's got a uh, 56 kilohertz carrier that pops up as I'm tuning through and it's modulated you can see the all the if level or, or the demodulated level bouncing up and down going through you know like ch many many channels very very quickly Oop. was that one no oh yeah um yeah we might actually that might be modulated we might be able to uh we might be able to hear something there Let's take a listen. No. no, I don't have enough signal level to do it. So, okay, well, again, I just wanted to show everybody what kind of the old old school method of uh, decoding and uh, and looking for what's at the baseband spectrum. So, uh, any comments, uh, leave them below, please. I appreciate it. And uh, 73 to everybody. This is W1VLF from the uh, ham desk signing out.